beaten Kansas State rank number two with a comfortable lead for the moment against a high powered cowboy team as we welcome you back. I'm Brent Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit and uphill though when you got a freshman quarterback here in this setting. You knew coming in it would be tough for, for Oklahoma State with the young quarterback and really he played well early until the latter part of the first half when he didn't see Chapman sitting back in coverage. I think he was anticipating him sinking back. Chapman just stepped right in front of his intended receiver that led to the, of course a pick six and then a little we could tell if Zimmerman made the catch but eventually it was Chapman with his second interception so now we see how West Lunt will perform but when you look at those two turnovers that led the points or two of them three turnovers they've been able to create two of which led to touchdowns they've also had a kickoff return for a touchdown I mean, they, they're, they're getting Oklahoma State in the areas that Bill Snyder's teams typically get after opponents so Oklahoma State will be the beneficiary of this penalty as the ball goes out of bounds. We take a look at the Pacific Life game summary between a senior quarterback from Kansas State and the freshman at Oklahoma State and the senior as you might expect has not made the big mistake. No he, he's been able to avoid the mistakes and he's at this point just kind of managing this offense and eventually the thing about Colin Klein is He'll hit a big play and he can it, when it happens it happens fast and up to this point Oklahoma State's done a pretty good job of controlling him and that big play ability. First down and 10 the penalty brings the ball to the 35 yard line of Oklahoma State. They'll start it off with a Randall run trying to get to the left edge down at the 35. We check in down below with Heather. Brent, I was able to catch up with Mike Gundy and he talked about the need to tackle better, especially on special teams and limit the turnovers. And when I talked to him about his quarterback, Wes Lunt, he said, unfortunately, you can't fast forward a freshman. I think he has played just average. I asked him to settle down here in the second half. On second down, Lunt in trouble, drops off the screen to Randall, though, and Randall Battles for the first down, I believe. They're going to give him the spot. Yes, indeed. I'll tell you, Lunt uh, showed some courage, her, Herbie, and uh, he took a hit on that. He sure did. His pressure was coming from Meshack Williams. He, Meshack Williams went right by Koenig, and he got that ball off just in time, and he setting up that screen. It's a good time to be able to get that ball off, but the key is recognizing that pressure and still keeping that moxie and delivering the football. And Williams on the sideline right now. He's had a good year. Play action. Work the middle now and wide open to the 26 yard line is Blake Webb and Blake is another of these talented freshmen. Watch the patience here by Lunt. The receiver has to come all the way across and he finds the window on the other side of Arthur Brown. Good job of sitting in there letting that play develop by West Lunt. 27 yard gain. Ball across the 30 now Randall goes back into the backfield with Lunt. Cowboys are going to keep it up in the air. Middles open and he threw an interception. He overthrew his receiver and it is picked off at the five by Nigel Malone. And that is the third interception thrown by the freshman. And he locked in that time to his receiver, Blake Jackson. And this is part of his growth as a young quarterback. There isn't a receiver off to the left. Nothing to hold that defensive back. He has nothing other than to just look into the eyes of the quarterback. And that made it very easy for a senior corner, Malone. Nobody's to threaten him in front or behind. He reads the quarterback's eyes, and it leads him right to the football. Took a blow to as he delivered that pass. You can see him being tended to over there. Pease has checked in as the running back. Klein keeps it. And Klein is going to be thrown down. Klein has carried the ball 14 times here tonight. Elkins makes the stop on him. So he's thrown 19 passes and he's run 14 times from scrimmage. So the one thing that you wonder about with him. And I see him kind of holding that uh, right hand in the wrist area there it is really the punishment he takes uh, with all the carries he has during the course of a game and and a season yeah, over 300 carries last year. He's almost like Robocop. I mean he just does not stop. He just keeps coming no matter how many hits he takes. Second and seven this time he'll hand off to Pease and Pease will be short of the first down as Gary comes up with a stop and take a look at the wrist on this particular play. This was uh, just the previous play. You see the defender had a hold of his hand and twisted it back. 
Right away he grabbed a hold of that right wrist and his throwing arm. So we'll keep an eye on that now. They will have to carry him off of the football field. Third down and four. Hear that hard snap count. Oklahoma State tipping their hand with their coverage. Klein makes the adjustment. Blitz throws for a first down to Thompson. And Thompson's to the 24 yard line. He picked up the blitz beautifully and threw right to the spot that he should. And he, he recognized the blitz and he threw right into the blitz. Ball's underthrown a bit, a good adjustment by Tremaine Thompson. But the reason he gave that hard count, and he's been doing that a lot tonight, and he's been doing it a lot this year, is he gets the defense just to cheat a little bit, especially on third down, to show where the pressure might be coming from. Play action. Drop it off now to Tannehill. And another first in. And Tannehill, who's a senior from Overland Park, Kansas, he delivers some punishment at the end of this run. Well, he sure does, Brent. And he comes off and he gets away from the man man to man, man pressure from Shamil Gary. I think this is another receiver. We talk a lot about Lockett and Thompson and Harper, but I think the development of Tannehill as a receiver, and not just a big physical blocking tight end, is another weapon that Colin Klein can take advantage of. Flea flicker. Here's Klein. And it is complete to Harper. Harper still going. And he is finally out of bounds around the 21 yard line. Low hanging on. What a great run after the catch by Chris Harper here. They're trying to get Brown out of position to come up and try to stop Pease. And I think he had an option there to go to the post for the touchdown. But Brown actually stays back on him, so he just takes it to the outside. And then how about how physical a receiver he is? 235 pounds at six foot one. 41 yard gain. Puts the ball right there on the edge of the red zone for Colin Klein. It has been a big play night here. Running to the left, looking daylight, got it. Nine yards on the run as he comes over to the left side and low again, forced to make the tackle. And he had a he had a shovel pass option with eight C eight in front of him. There's a lot of different options that he has there. The shuffle pass with Pease following him underneath. He could maybe throw it downfield or he can keep it himself. Because he was able to get to the edge of that defense, he decided to keep it himself. But eventually, he could dump it underneath there to the shovel pass to Angelo Pease. Opening drive of the second half. And Kansas State has punched it down to the 11-yard line. Second down and one. Three wide outs. Tannehill the tight end to the right. Klein takes a step, got the first down, turns it at the five, dives toward that pylon. Touchdown, Kansas State. That's his 17th rush touchdown of the year. If this one holds up. Castleman's right there to make a play. The poor fella on his knees trying to get a hand on him. I don't, know, walks I don't know if, in, right? Yeah, I don't know if the ball the ball was in his left arm. I don't know if it crossed the plane. We'll have to see. Gilbert doing everything he can to be able to try to stop it there. And it has been stopped. Instant replay's been busy. They are going to take a on look the field at this. Was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Earlier, if you were not with us in the first half, I think instant replay had one of its toughest calls of the year. It was an interception by Kansas State. And what made it very complicated was that a second Kansas State defensive back went up to take it away. Now, this is what they're looking at on this one upstairs. He appears to step inside the pylon. But Herbie's point is, what about the football? Because it is very close, tucked under the left arm as he steps toward the pylon. Very difficult to tell, of course, from that. Indisputable would be the only evidence that would turn it over. Sure. Obviously, he hits the pylon. He hits the pylon. The other it, foot was completely on the inside of it yeah, yeah. as he came across.
They want to see that football break the plane before you step out of bounds. Down here at these, uh, After further review, when the runner's foot hit the pylon, the ball was short of the goal line by a foot. It's first down. I think it's a good call, Herbie, and you saw it right away. You said there was a question about the football yeah. in relation to There was no question he got inside the pylon, and the other foot did hit it, And uh, but there was always a question about where the football was. Yeah, it's that, that's the thing you always have to remember on those plays. <laughs> at the goal line, when they get pushed out of bounds is where is the football it's not his foot touching the pylon but where the ball is but it's first and goal <laughs> yeah inevitable and checks back he's got his fullback he's got peas as a tailback and keeps it himself and bashes straight ahead no doubt about this one So that is his 17th rush touchdown this season. Colin Klein, the Heisman Trophy winner, is just having a remarkable season. He has not thrown a touchdown pass here tonight. Not quite the winner just yet. <laughs> you're, you're doing a little foreshadowing there. He, he's the front runner, that's for sure. Feels like he's the winner. He's so far out in front. Yeah, well, that's that's know, even. That's yeah. I'm with you. I got you, Vance. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Look at all the hardware. Hand I saw the hardware. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what give it, give it to the lad, right? <laughs> Kansas State leading Oklahoma State 38 17 as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the BCS championship and Kansas State very much in contention. Oklahoma State now has four turnovers on the night and three of those have resulted in touchdowns. Combine that kickoff return by Lockett for a touchdown now. From the six yard line, Gilbert. And he's down to 21. You know, uh, West Lunt appeared shaken up. Uh, Heather, what's the report down on the sideline about the uh, freshman quarterback? Well, Brent, Les West Lunt remains seated on the training table with the medical staff. I overheard him telling them that he felt like he was going to throw up. Head athletic trainer Kevin Blasky told me he did get hit hard in the stomach with a helmet. Their plan is to watch him for a bit before they decide whether or not he can go back in. So, still suffering from nausea. In the meantime, Junior Clint Shelf in, in his place. The entire offense just huddled around him, giving him lots of props, trying to give the junior some confidence. Yeah, that was Meshach Williams, and that uh, he'd give you a headache and a stomachache. So here comes Shelf. Clint Shelf is a junior from Enid, Oklahoma, and he will now run this Oklahoma State offense. Tough spot now. Back in the gun, complete in underneath with his first pass to the 40 is Blake Webb. And Blake Webb from the Woodlands in Texas, a freshman. That's his second catch of the night. I did talk to Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator on the field before the game and asked him if Lunt struggles and you go to Chelf, what can he do? He says, you know what? He's just a steady backup. J.W. Walsh, the other freshman, is out. So Chelf comes in. He's very experienced with the offense. Chelf trying to light a fire. 
Sparks to Austin Hayes, and so he's gone freshman to freshman. Webb and then Hayes back to back. Childs makes the play defensively. That's the thing about this offense. Not only losing Justin Blackman, but this year Tracy Moore and Isaiah Anderson, they're two senior receivers down, so they've relied to rely not just on freshman quarterback, but a lot of freshmen out at wide receiver. Stewart better get ready if he starts looking at one of the inside men. Now he comes deep down the middle, complete to the 30 yard line. So that like is this. Charlie Moore and quickly three in a row and Clint Shelf picks up another 23 two, yards with two, this pass. Two receivers from the right will come over to the left. The safety Zimmerman bites on the front receiver and open it up behind that and another good throw by Shelf here. That's three in a row. He's now seven of 11 for the season. This is his 12th. Oh, that was almost picked. Chapman looking for number three. He'll be ball hawking now. He wants the hat truck, that young man. You know, Chapman has replaced David Garrett, a veteran last year and a leader of the defense, and he's had a great year. You're right, Brent. I think he was sniffing that. He read the route from Charlie Moore, almost jumped in front of that, and it would have been not only its third pick, but his second pick six. Second and ten. Wildcats show blitz trying to come there and they bring Randall down for a loss. That was Childs the linebacker Terrell Childs has been active the senior backup behind Justin Tuggle playing a lot more tonight because of Trey Walker being out And you could see he's coming. It was just a matter of whether or not the back was going to be able to get up underneath him He comes again same spot Shelf under pressure gets it off high and a great leaping grab over there on the far side by Charlie Moore. What a fine catch that was and the two are wrapped up together over there. Charlie Moore went airborne against Chapman. That was impressive. Chapman never gives up on a football <laughs> even if it's his teammate. He wants that ball. What a ball hawk. Sitting in there on third and long. Keep in mind, shelf has been sitting on the sideline cold all night. He comes in in this series, and he gives his receiver a chance. Outstanding effort by Moore. Big win here now. Fourth and one. They've got Randall. They check back over to the sideline, and a penalty flag. Is this going to be fourth and six? A false start killer. by number 87 of the offense. That's a killer. Five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. So Tracy Moore, remember now that was Dickerson who's wearing 87 because Tracy Moore is out. So they were using Dickerson, and he's eligible wearing that number tonight. So that is Dickerson who was guilty and not Tracy Moore. So this is a 42-yard field goal attempt by Quinn Sharp. NFL scouts are paying attention. Like a chip shot for him. Unbelievable the way he can kick and also punt. You don't see guys who are as good as he is at both. And it, yeah, exactly. See? He's aces in both. He'll be, as you say, at the next level. I want to be his ace. <laughs> Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Ford and the Go Further with Ford Night. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Avis. Well, Kansas State's new basketball coach, Bruce Weber, was at Illinois, went to the championship game. He's a fan of college football down on the sideline. They have an exhibition game tomorrow against Emporia State, and then their season opener Friday, November 9th, against North Dakota. Hoops time, Herbie. Hoops. Can I wait? I love college hoops. I know you do. Not an NBA guy, but I'll be all over the college. Oh, there's a uh, ground ball scooped up at the 30 yard line, and so Kansas State will have it at the 40, and that was Trujillo. And there's a reminder about Monday night Eagles and the Saints. What's wrong with Michael Vick? Is he going to straighten things out? And uh, Drew Brees and the Saints have been struggling. And don't forget, at halftime, the interview with the two presidential candidates, President Barack Obama and Republican candidate Mitt Romney. That'll be at halftime. So it is first down and 10. And Daniel Sams, I believe, has checked in. Yes, he has as the quarterback. So enough abuse for Colin Klein tonight who carried the ball 17 times and uh, he threw 22 times so Colin Klein 
the perceived front runner there for the go. Heisman Trophy. Now, we showed that shot of, of his wrist being pulled back. Oh, and, yes. You know, up 18. You wonder how much that right, that, that right wrist might be bothering him. Sams is a terrific athlete. He can run the football. He can run that option game that Bill Snyder loves so much. He's from Louisiana, Slidell, Louisiana. Redshirt freshman, 6'2", 204. Number four, Daniel Sams, now quarterbacking the unbeaten Wildcats. And I can see some of that athletic ability yeah. right there. It's stopped by Elkins. It's a different kind of option look with Sams in there, but Collins. I don't see anybody tending to those wrists right now. Like you said, yeah. you'd have to carry him off the field. Yeah, let's hope, uh, let's hope he's okay. He's smiling down there. And that is his brother, by the way, Kyle Klein, number 81, converted defensive end to wide receiver. And he, too, of course, uh, played at Loveland High School in Colorado. And Kyle is a redshirt freshman, 6'3", 210. So he's over there. So we've got both starting quarterbacks on the sideline now as uh, Lunt. Kansas State calls their first timeout of the half. Media timeout. So Lunt is uh, leaving the field to go back to the Oklahoma State locker room, and you're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Millions of viewers to help those impacted by Hurricane Sandy. ESPN is proud to join ABC to help raise donations for this cause. To donate, text ABC to 90999 to give $10 or go to redcross.org slash ABC third down and three coming up here for Kansas State the Wildcats lead it it appears as though they're going to stay undefeated their backup quarterback is on the field right now Daniel Sams has replaced Colin Klein and there is Colin with his younger brother both are still on the sideline talking about younger brothers you might remember the name Rob Gronkowski pretty good football player folks with uh, with the New England Patriots, well, there is the youngest Gronkowski, okay? That's right. He's a redshirt freshman. They're hoping to redshirt him here at Kansas State. He has a tremendous upside. In fact, if you ask Rob, he will tell you he's the best Gronkowski in the whole family. <laughs> so here he is in Manhattan, Kansas. And now Oklahoma State with its backup quarterback going to get the ball back. It's going to be down inside the five-yard line. Down at the one yard line beautifully. And Colin Klein has he's out of the game for now, but he's had a game that started a little bit slow, then he found his way. He started to make some plays with his feet, got him settled in, and this was, I think, a turning point in the football game. A double move where he found his receiver downfield. Been able to do a lot of different things, and this is how they attack. They've had an advantage of getting some special teams breaks. They've gotten the four turnovers. And Colin Klein and the Wildcats offense able to take advantage of the opportunities that they've had. 38-20. Chelf back in the end zone. Wildcats show pressure. Brown can't get inside. And it's a short completion. And that is to Hayes, the freshman. Caught a long touchdown pass in the first half. 38-20 is our score here. Second down, they hand it off with the running game to the six-yard line. Let's check in Heather on the report about West Lunt. Heather? Well, guys, you saw before the break that West Lunt went into the locker room. He's gone in for more in-depth concussion testing. As I told you before, he was nauseous. I've also been told he's foggy, glassy-eyed, and they have confirmed he will not return to this game. So it's up to Chelfer, and he's got a third and five. Must get the ball. Out to the 11-yard line. They're going to try it with the draw play, and Randall oh, can't get there. Tripped up by Arthur Brown, the outstanding linebacker, number four from Wichita. And he was actually held on the play, and he still got by Brandon Webb, the left guard. Watch 51. Wrap up on, hold on to him. Brown gets in there, and there's our guy, Jarrell Childs, who's been really active tonight. Good instincts there and a good job of recognizing that draw on third down. Trips up his good buddy. They were teammates on a high school relay team in Wichita. 
So Oklahoma State will punt it away and this is going to give Kansas State outstanding field position and let us check in with Robert Flores in the studio. And Robert the score of that game is 62 45 and would you believe that Matt Barkley is threatening on the final five seconds of that game out in the Los Angeles Coliseum first down and ten for Tom's now hands off to Hubert and he's to the 35 yard line and folks the Trojans have just scored <laughs> Matt Barkley has just chucked one in it's going to be Oh, 62 52, I would guess, if the extra point is good, something like that. <laughs> and we've been talking all year about how much the Oregon defense has improved. And Matt Barkley and SC are good, but that's probably close to 600 yards of offense for SC against Oregon's defense. So the Ducks are going to stay undefeated. Notre Dame survived a triple <laughs> overtime to stay undefeated. Kansas State is in command here and Alabama leads LSU 14 3 so the big Ten. four oh, 14, they, did 10. they score yeah LSU they finally did. punched it that's the first <laughs> touchdown they've scored in over a dozen quarters out there 14 10 and we'll take a look at the big picture Isn't <laughs> that's that the right. big picture 14 to 10 LSU, get any bigger than that. LSU just scored so it's 14 to 10 14 10 okay and here it is 38 to 20. Third down and three now for Daniel Sams. Sams has the first down and spins across the 25 yard line. Different feel in this option attack when Sams gets in here versus Colin Klein. Klein is patient. He kind of slithers his way through the defense. And Sams comes in here and looks more like a tailback running this option attack. 6 2, 2 11 and can really shake you when he gets you out in space. Can throw it well enough, just enough to keep you honest. And the safeties now, you can see they're all down. They got nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage. Here comes Hubert. Picks his way behind the left side of that offensive line. Lucas, White here. And this is the month where everybody starts to compare and contrast these teams that are up near the top. I mean, you've got Alabama playing LSU. Did you see Notre Dame against Pitt? What about Oregon? I, we thought their defense was good. How about Kansas State against Oklahoma State? Everybody's going to start to really have strong opinions based on games from today, but I just encourage everybody to look at the entire body of work and watch these teams all year. Sams takes it away in trouble and picks up about a yard before he got bent up. Castleman, Bassett were there. He is a, a tough guy, and we said, I think Oklahoma State, they're just not only out here competing down 18, they're trying to do what they can to get Sams into some obvious passing situations. So we'll take a break here. Kansas State is up 18 in uh, Mr. Herb Street. LSU has just recovered an onside kick. That's my update. <laughs> <laughs> this presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8. We'll return after this. Welcome you back. It'll be third down and six coming up. Daniel Sams has replaced Colin Klein. Colin over on the sideline without his helmet. So it appears that he will not be back in this game. Uh, although, Mr. Herbstreit, if Oklahoma State would have closed to about 10 or so, do you think he'd be back? Yeah, that, that's the thing. You don't know uh, if, if he's down there in the precautionary measure or they're just resting him. To the end zone, deflected, incomplete. Low, I believe, got a hand on that working in the end zone. Low is a junior safety, Daytuan. I think he might have got a hand on it. And he had one on one coverage. He's got to throw this ball to the corner. It gives him a little shake and to the outside, but the ball's thrown back to the inside, and it makes it pretty easy for Low to come over and knock the ball away. But when you have one on one coverage, you can see Harper's frustrated because he beat Brown to the corner, but the ball's thrown inside, and that's not where it needs to be. But that's part of being a freshman. 37 yarder here by Ken Telly. Long enough. And it's good. Anthony Cantelli tacks on another three points. 41 20, unbeaten Kansas State. 
Let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary and Kansas State played Kansas State football. They were able to create four turnovers so far on the night, turned three of those into touchdowns. And the other thing is it was kind of typical Colin Klein. He's uh, settled into this game, found some receivers open, had 17 carries on the night, got this one into the end zone for a touchdown, and now they've taken his helmet away. The equipment man, Heather Cox, telling us literally has taken his helmet away and put it away for the evening with a 21-point lead. Fielded on the one-yard line by Justin Gilbert. And Gilbert is out to the 20-yard line. Another reminder, the NASCAR has chased down at three races. Jimmy Johnson has taken the lead. They'll go to the Lone Star State. Three races remain. History has made a championship one. NASCAR Chase Sprint Cup Series at Texas, 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. First down and 10 now. Clint Shelf checks in. I want to keep Mr. Herbstreit up to date as best I can. And I will right after this play. First down and 10. Shelf working the sideline goes incomplete and uh, Charlie Moore had a crack at it Herbie and uh, couldn't come up with it but uh, you know the big picture uh, Alabama leading LSU 14 10 that onside kick I told you about was called back yes and Bama drove to the 10 fumbled and turned it over and LSU now coming out they're just about getting into the fourth quarter of that one I know you're very interested in that scene yeah yeah see if you know, it'd be interesting if LSU pulled off that upset Kansas State sitting here at two could we be watching the number one team in the country playing tonight what a very good question a there's a penalty flag by number 58 of the offense the five yard penalty and it's still second down well let us check in with uh, Robert Flores for an update and uh, maybe he'll shed some light on the events Robert all right, Brent, here's what's happening on SportsCenter right now, brought to you by HP. Alabama looking to extend their lead deep inside Tiger territory, but the freshman T.J. Yeldon fumbled the ball. Now LSU is driving, and they're in Bama territory. All right, and here, the backup quarterback, Clint Shelf, firing another completion. You know, Herbie, the little rascal's coming and throwing the ball pretty well. He really has. I, I, I've been impressed with is his composure and we watched a true freshman Lunt make some mistakes and Shelf who's been sitting around most of the night at least has some experience he was the backup last year to Brandon Wheaton and had a chance to sit in those meetings and watch Brandon and learn from Brandon and I think he has a little bit more poise in this kind of environment working on the slant and it's a beautiful Pitch that time, and uh, that was Jackson again. He goes back to Blake Jackson. So much of this offense is just about the relationship between the quarterback and his wide receivers. Mike Gundy wants his quarterback to make quick decisions and get the ball out of his hands, and that's what we've seen from Chelf. First down and 10. Chelf going downfield. Got a man open. And out of bounds at the 25-yard line is Charlie Moore. And so now the Cowboys are threatening. Yeah, he's now 8 of 10. And that time we did not see Chapman get much of a bump there. Moore just got behind him. And when you're in that coverage, the corner's got to at least get his hands on the receiver to slow him down. Four wide receivers. Shelf. Steps off to the left, looking for the end zone. Couldn't get a man open, so he takes off. And he crosses the 15-yard line for a first down. Child's forced to make the stop, but uh, really? good judgment. His receiver's recovered in the end zone. Really nice job. Now, we'll see if he can finish his drive off. This is an area that's been tough for Oklahoma State, but it was five plays, 67 yards in a minute 25. He's leading them right down the field. Working with four wide receivers. Randall in the backfield. He slips out. Fire high. Caught in the back of the end zone for a touchdown by Charlie Moore. So what a great drive here by Clint Shelf and Oklahoma State. That was beautifully orchestrated. And give the offensive line some credit as well for being able to hold up against pressure. He gets his foot down, that right foot down. That's a touchdown. But the five guys up front on that series built a wall there and gave him plenty of time. That that route took some time for Moore to work his way to the middle of the field. So Quint Sharp tacks on the extra point. We take another look at this throw. He'd broken away from Chapman. Touchdown, Cowboy. Might start looking for Collins' helmet here soon. 
So we are back. The crowd's fired up. You look at that score and you think Kansas State's got it in hand, and it's uh uh. One defensive stop by Okie State and a quick touchdown. And folks, the noose is tightened. That's a misleading 41-27. Sure is. is not as much daylight as you think. And the way Chelf played on that last series, six plays, 80 yards, minute 44, touchdown. Thompson driven back now to the seven-yard line. Looking for an alley. He's got it. Thompson breaks free. Needs a block. First out of bounds at the 33-yard line. What a great return. And this time, Sharp, the kicker who ran away from the coverage. There he is. There's a good look at him. He actually is going to get involved. He's running away from it, but he forces him back into the boundary. That a boy, Sharp. Way to take a hit for the team. That a baby. Way to save that touchdown. Yeah, after you buried him. Yeah, in the we first teased half him a little over. earlier. We got to we got to come back. Yeah, you make it up to him now. That's right. Huh? Look at the effort. He's yeah. losing his helmet. Where'd he go? The hair's Herbie's flying got everywhere. Him on the Atta defensive boy, team now. <laughs> First down and 10 after that 60 yard return. Here we go now. I give him some love. And then Sams keeps it, spins for a couple of yards, and it's going to be second down. Remember now, Oklahoma State needs just to stop because here is that touchdown by the Cowboys moments ago. Yeah, a little inside move by Blake Jackson will actually occupy Milo, and then here is the touchdown behind it. Really good job of this quarterback actually makes the safety bite on that move, and then it opens it up behind it. Charlie Moore has had a great night tonight for this Oklahoma State offense, but cannot say enough about Clint Shelf and the job of stepping in. Nine for 11 now for 136 yards, <laughs> stepping in for West Lunt. Second down and 10 for Sams and the offense. Under pressure. Fires beautifully to Lockett. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Where teams' dreams come to die. I told you, my friend. <laughs> Give an update, Herbie. It's your turn. <laughs> update him. Well, Zach Mettenberger. Yes. He's just thrown a touchdown pass. To do what? To take the lead. There you go, my for friend. For LSU. So there, there are a go. few Kansas State <laughs> fans right now watching. After all that cheerleading number, you did for the Crimson one. Tide on game day to day. That was very tough I for you to say. I didn't put an elephant on my head. <laughs> <laughs> we know who did, though. Third yeah. down now. The whole world. Sams. Oh, what a great tackle on Tannehill by Broderick Brown. Came off of his receiver, and he is short of the first down. This will bring up a fourth down for Sams. Nice play here by the veteran Brown coming up on the big tight end, Tannehill. And Bill Snyder's got an interesting decision here because, well, he's going to bring out the kicker to try to extend this lead, get off of this 14-point lead and try to make it a three-possession game. Absolutely. Remember now, he doesn't know, nor does he want to know. But Alabama could be in trouble. And that means that the battle for number one is in play here tonight. If LSU's lead holds up, this is a 40 yarder by Cantella. They're still trying to reset the play clock. Kansas State substituted late, and Oklahoma State did not have time to match up. Fourth down. a big kick. Forty yarder for Cantelli. Door the punter puts it down. Looks good. He's got it. And it's 44-27. Now remember, hang on all you Wildcat fans. You could indeed be number one by tomorrow night. There's the college football bus, and Mr. Herbstreet, it is standing room only on this bus <laughs> to Kansas City tonight. It is a, it's a right long haul, the right? Game. We may be back here on December 1st. We could be. I'm going to tell you, Texas in here playing Kansas. If Kansas State is sitting one or two. Yeah. Yes, sir. How about Mac Brown and the horns with a huge win today? Yeah, it was Love big. It. That, that was big. big. Yes, it was. Well, we enjoyed watching, boy, I tell you, that Notre Dame game had us on the edge of our seats today. Paul Chris doing a great job in there and uh, heartbreaking loss for him. It'll come on to 35. Let's go to Robert Flores. Robert, update everybody on the uh, on the LSU score, my friend. <laughs> ah, Robert, I promise, I promise 
But the next time Bama or LSU scores, I'll let you go first. But I'm not going to give you a whole lot of lead time, my friend. First down and 10 now. There are the Cowboys trying to battle back here with 10.47 left. Complete the start for that 40-yard line, and he just threw it in there. Shelf has really sparked this offense. And the timing between Shelf and his receivers, they're finally getting the ball here to Josh Stewart. We've been seeing a lot of Charlie Moore. We've seen a lot of Blake Jackson. This time, Stewart gets downfield. Usually a guy in space. This time, he gets downfield vertically. 27 more yards. We've had one big play after another here. Now Chelf forced on the move. He's going to take off. <laughs> and he's close to that 30-yard line and that first down marker just across it. Evans making another stop. And the young man from Enid High School, Oklahoma. Working very well, not just with his receivers, but with the offensive line. When things are covered downfield, he buys just enough time, and he's been able to escape a couple times tonight for yards. Second down and two now for Chelf and the Cowboy offense. Backing it up, fires for that first down. And across the 25-yard line, that was Hayes making another play, and Malone with the stop for Kansas State. The biggest difference you're seeing right now with Chelf because of his experience is how quick he's making decisions. Childs brought the blitz off the edge. It was one-on-one -on -one to the boundary, and he gets it out of his hands quickly for an easy first down. Jeremy Smith now checks in as a running back for the Cowboys. And they flare him out. Offensive line holds and a strike for a first and 10 right at the 10 yard line. And that was Charlie Moore again who caught that last touchdown pass. They are stretching Kansas State's defense from sideline to sideline. So horizontally, and then it's creating the seams vertically. And Chelf right now is in a zone recognizing coverage and getting the ball out of his hands. One of the best offenses in college football, Oklahoma State on the move again, trying to battle from behind. Having lost their starting quarterback. Incomplete and juggled out of bounds on that sideline by Jackson. This is where they really miss that Justin Blackman, that, that, the difference maker down in the red zone. Now they were able to hit the touchdown to Charlie Moore in that last series. They're going to have to find somebody for Mike Gundy here to be able to slip behind a safety or a linebacker. It's tough out on the edge against the defense down in this area. Second down and 10. Throws the corner of the incomplete. Stewart was the intended target. Zimmerman, the safety, was giving chase to him. The first times that we've seen Clint Shelf, because of pressure, not get his feet settled underneath him before he threw. That time he felt pressure from his right and he started to move to his left and he tried to throw it at the same time. It, it affected his not only the velocity but also more importantly the accuracy. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage there against Zimmerman, the safety. Third down and ten. Crowd alive in Manhattan. Chelf. Almost intercepted. Threw it into the hands of Milo, and he couldn't hang on. That Milo time, had a pretty easy shot at an interception sure there, Herbie. At this time, they brought the house. They brought one more than the offensive line could pick up, and Shelf makes his first mental mistake. See, Tuggle gets in there free. He threw that ball before Randall, the running back who was out at receiver, even turned his head. And Sharp will attempt to get that field goal back. It's a 28 yarder. Four drives by Chelf. Two field goals, a touchdown, and one punt. The lead is back to 14. Strikes, and it's game on here in the Little Apple. A little under nine minutes to go. The Bill Young's defense has got to make a stop or try to get a turnover and get the ball back. 
deep in the end zone. This will come out to 25. We've talked about the four unbeatens. I want to run down the schedules here that they have in front of them. And Alabama has Texas A&M, West Carolina, and Auburn if they get past LSU tonight. Herbie, what about the other three? Uh, you look at the rest of the way to go for Kansas State on the road. TCU had a big win. Texas all of a sudden trending back up. Notre Dame on the road at Boston College next week. And out at USC, which is always a challenge in a rivalry game. And you got Oregon. The way they look today, it's hard to imagine Cal, Stanford, or even Oregon State and Corvallis slowing down that Ducks offense. Angelo Peace comes in as the running back. Daniel Sams has replaced Colin Klein. Play action by Sams. Fires complete to Lockett, and Lockett dives for that first down marker. He's got it. Good call. Great call here by Bill Snyder. They've been running pretty much every snap with Sams in the game. And this defense just assuming that with Sams in, that Bill Snyder is looking to run option football. And he makes a nice throw, and the best thing about it is he got the ball thrown in a hurry out to Lockett. First down and 10 for Sam's 825 the clock critical now to the Cowboys. He follows Pease. He will step out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Let's try to stay in bounds work clock. All the little things right that add up for Bill Snyder. Got great suddenness, great quickness when he decides to keep the football. Second down and two coming up. First down, great throw on that to the tight end. Tannehill broke wide open on that play. And the Cowboys did not account for him. And the linebacker is actually coming on a blitz. It opened it up very nicely. See the blitz right there from Lewis. And it made it pretty easy for Sams to just like a little hot pass right over the top of that linebacker. There's nobody there. And Tannehill goes down and he is shaken up on this play. He's down on the 35 yard line being tended to as he hit on his head on the helmet. So the medical staff and the head coach are both out there with Tannehill right now. And that's a very good sign. He's being helped out. You know, I want to talk a little bit about the quarterback, Daniel Sams. He's a young man who was recruited out of high school down in Louisiana and uh, he was named to the large schools New Orleans all Metro football team and the one thing that Bill Snyder has done with this program through the years he's able to get in on blue chip high school players that wasn't the case when he first took over here it was uh, he had to do a patchwork and uh, kids who transferred uh, JC kids and now here comes the Wildcat attack and Pease sprints over to the left looking at daylight gonna come back to the right now Pease looking to beat one man what a fine run by Pease that time Broderick Brown I probably saved the touchdown with that he, he probably did Brandon Wildcat it's the tailback now and you can see those tailback moves Brown very very smart to stay at home if he didn't stay at home and he started to run to that football there's nobody left in the back side that's a touchdown Stay with Pease in the Wildcat. And Pease breaks for another first and 10. Down by the 15 yard line to the red zone. Now Sam's the quarterback is going to check back in for Coach Snyder. Watch the blocks up front. Sustaining their blocks, locking on to their linebackers, getting up to that second level. Combination blocks up front, then they work up to Lewis, Levy, and Elkins, the linebackers. A great job, again, by this offensive line from Kansas State. They're going to stay in that formation, and they're going to flank Sams out. He goes to the right side as a split in. The quarterback is at the top of your screen. Pease keeps it, still running, coming over to the left. 
cuts back into traffic and he's down at the 12 yard line where it'll be second down and that's the fine linebacker Elkins making another stop for the Cowboys. Colin Klein gets all the recognition for this team but the reason they're different this year is because of guys like Angelo Pease, John Hubert. We've seen the athletic ability of the freshman Daniel Sams, the receivers Chris Harper, Tyler Lockett, Tremaine Thompson. This is this is not a one man show for this Kansas State offense. Sam's now back as the quarterback and they'll show that pistol look. He has P's right behind him on this second down. The fullback Wilson offset to the right. Sam's keeps it. Complete. What a beautiful completion just short of the first down. Tannehill who was shaken up back in made that catch. And I mean it was a small target and Sam's hit it. You showed the basketball arena a little earlier the practice facility look he just kind of boxes him out just kind of walls him off with his body and that was a tight target not a whole lot of room but pretty good concentration and focus by Tannehill. Third down and one. Sands will follow Pease, and he's hit in the backfield for a loss. Number 45, Levy, the fine middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker there, made the stop. He finally got penetration. It's been tough to do for Oklahoma State. I mean, you know it's coming. And they haven't been able to get through that wall up front. That time they did. So trotting back onto the field is Anthony Cantelli, the senior kicker from Wichita. Twenty four yard attempt. Pulled this one badly to the left and missed it. Well we've got four minutes so now the Cowboys need a quick drive onside kick and who knows what's going to happen. Colin might start looking for his helmet here pretty soon. They might. He, where, where'd that rascal? Where'd that equipment manager hide that? I'm mean, gonna walk over here and see. Does somebody else's helmet fit me? You, you never know. Where's it? The way Clint Shelf has been throwing the football. If they're gonna try to make it interesting, they better score in a hurry. Here they come, Shelf. Fire is complete on the first pass to Jackson and he's got the first down to start this drive. Pretty good start. And they're now up tempo. They live up tempo. Here comes the blitz. Runs away from it. Going to try to get the first down, and he does. Fumble, balls are loose, picked up. Now, hold on, it was down, yep. ruled down. Great decision to get out of there, bail on it, and then try to get to the marker because Kansas State's in prevent. They're trying to keep everything in front of this defense. A good job of not waiting to bail. He got out of there in a hurry and got the first. Shelf got a man open, deflected, incomplete. He missed. His tight end Blake Jackson was wide open in the middle of the field that time. I think he locked in that time to Josh Stewart. I think he felt that he could squeeze that in there. Didn't necessarily look and read the coverage. There are two defenders there. That was a tough throw to make. Second and ten with three and a half minutes to go now. Randall flares out and it was deflected at the line of scrimmage and here comes a third and ten. It's like the big freshman Travis Britz got his hand on that knocked it down it's Oklahoma State it's hard to get to the Oklahoma State quarterbacks they've only allowed three sacks on the entire year so you've got to be able to get your hands up as a defensive lineman good job by the freshman well, you got the two inside men Shelf's in trouble that's a fumble that's a loose ball it was punched by Williams, the fine defensive lineman, Meshack Williams. A tuggle didn't allow him that time to break contain. He's had some success buying time by getting outside of the pocket. Tuggle, the, black, the linebacker, blitzed to his blind side, and it spooked him a little bit and made him panic. Now 
it is fourth down and 10. 320, Cowboys going for it. This could be the Cowboys' last chance. And he's got the first down, Stewart. Picked up 14 yards on that pass with 314. The Cowboys still alive with Clint Shelf at the controls now, and he's 14 to 22. He's thrown for 200 yards here off that bench. Got time, middle, good to the 22 yard. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. From the Wildcats, 23 yard line. Three minutes to go, down 14. Shelf going to take off. And he's to the 20 yard line, wrestled down by Davis. Still enough time where they don't need to expend any of these timeouts. Hold on to those three timeouts as long as they can. They can score in such a hurry that they want to try to hold on to them. Shelf is back. Deep end zone incomplete. I don't see a penalty flag on it either. That same. was Chapman, the defensive back, who made a fine play. Same route that they threw earlier for the touchdown where they took Blake Jackson to the middle of the field and it occupied the safety and it made that one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside. Moore hit that earlier for the touchdown. Do you think Chapman got away with pretty something? Close, pretty huh? close. Yeah, Not he hooked him there. Yep. Huh? Third down and seven. Shelf, quick, incomplete. And it'll come down to fourth down again. Yeah. So here we come now, your fourth down play. They've converted one on this drive trying to stay alive. I really love Shelf's attitude tonight. I don't know how this game's going to end, but I just love what he's doing and the way he's leading this team. That time, Blake Jackson, ball was perfectly thrown. He just wasn't anticipating the football. Wasn't ready for it. Timeout has been called. Gundy walked down the sideline to call the timeout before this fourth down snap. Bill Snyder, you know there are so many stats, Herbie, about Snyder. I want to give you one. Yep. In the 10 years before Snyder won, before he was first named head coach here, in the 10 years, all right, the Wildcats went 1-9 and nine against Oklahoma State. In the 10 years right after he showed up for term one, now two of the years they did not play Oklahoma State because of the Big 12 divisions, he went 7-1 and one against Oklahoma State. So just like that, he turned it around. Says it all right there. Fourth down and seven, and here we go for the Cowboys. Got his man incomplete, and is there a penalty flag? Yes, there is. A penalty flag comes flying. And Gundy thinks that that flag should have flown earlier. That's what he was well, complaining about. I think he's frustrated because the official who was standing right in front of it actually reached into his pocket to call it and then he didn't call it it came from the, the official Pass in the back interference by number 24 of the defense that's it's Malone foul and an automatic first down. So that's a spot foul but a first down the official is pretty close that's, that's a no-brainer there Malone hooked hooked him with his left arm you got both of yeah. his right hand yeah. is on him too I mean no no right call and gives Jelf and the Cowboys offense another chance here 231 two and a half minutes now Empty backfield for Chelp. Throws in underneath, and Stewart is rustled down at the eight yard line. So this will bring up a second down. And of course, anytime K State could keep him out of the end zone, they eat up some time here. They got it down to 214 and counting. Chelp throwing to the right corner. Dive, jump ball, intercepted, picked off by you know who. The hat trick. For Chapman, Alan Chapman with his third interception of the night. The senior from San Francisco who played at the City College of San Francisco before transferring here. 
And he has a rare night for a defensive back. Watch the quarterback. Wait, wait, wait. So many of his throws have been get back, get the ball out. Get back, get the ball out. It's one of the few times he had to sit back there. Hitch, hitch, hitch. I think it affected his rhythm and timing. And he actually underthrew the football to allow Chapman, number three, to come up with his third interception. It's one of the few poor throws we've seen from Clint Shelf on the night. Any question about who the Big 12 defensive player of the week will be? Uh, no. That, that. You're looking at that, young man. <laughs> I think that's pretty Three easy. Three interceptions. In one night, here comes Pease. Pease gets the corner and goes down. Smart move. Well coached. Keep the clock moving. Now, Oklahoma State can stop it a couple of times with their timeouts. We've moved inside of a couple of minutes. Pretty good effort by Oklahoma State to try to fight their way back into this game. And if they would have put a touchdown on the board there, they're within seven. And then it comes down to an onside kick. Clint Shelf should be very proud of what he was able to do in trying to get this team back in the game. So Pease will run that Wildcat again. And he'll keep it behind Wilson, breaking free. And depending on the spot, it appears like he's got a first down here with 123 so the Wildcats it appears are going to stay unbeaten one of that final four and still Alabama is under fire with 323 to go who knows Bill Snyder and Kansas State could be number one by tomorrow night and again what time is that show 830 for you guys 830 East. 830s I'll be there Herbie. I'll be you, watching. you want to hop on with us <laughs> I'd love to get some of your opinions on this don't I love don't be surprised if Oregon, if Alabama loses, Oregon sitting at two in the coaches poll and the Harris poll, they're going to get a lot of first place votes. Wait, wait, and that I, could I, move I, Oregon can, up. Can you tell me how many points UFC scored tonight? They scored a there, ton. Right, here's Notre Dame now. Hurry up, we're going to get that in right, a second. They survived in three overtimes. You and I were watching that all day against Pittsburgh. It, the, there's the Oregon sword, okay? And. Uh, LSU roaring back. They lead Alabama. I think what we got about three and a half to go in that game. Something like that. Okay, now, Herbie, how many points did USC score? A uh, bunch. Yeah. I can't remember. I, I, the coaches aren't going to consider the defense no, that Oregon no. what didn't they're gonna play. Do, what they're going to do is what they do every week. If number one loses, who's at two? And they'll move that number two team up to one. Well, I'm interested in the BCS. I don't Well, the, but the BCS, you got to remember, two-thirds of the BCS is the coaches pull and the Harris pull. So you think that if Oregon Alabama is going to jump Oregon's Kansas State? Oregon's got a shot to go past every the, uh, Notre Dame and or and Kansas State. Wow, Mr. Herb Street out on that duck limb. We'll see. I'm I'm saying that Kansas State staying number two after this performance. Staying at two? Yeah, stay at two. Yeah, they and two Oregon will be, go to one. They'll stay at two. They're going to stay here and or. <laughs> I had your Crimson Tide coming back. Good one, though. All right, let's go check in with Heather. Bill, congratulations now, 9-0 and and undefeated. This is the first time that anybody on your team or you in your second stint has beaten Oklahoma State. What does it mean to the program to get over that hump? Well, I've been here for a long time, so we've won a game or two against Oklahoma State. I Just in your second stint, nobody on this team has done it. So I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. You know, we just work for today and try to get better today. Coach, what can you tell us about Colin Klein and why he didn't return to the game? Well, he obviously there was a, an injury, so we'll have to see how that goes. Can you tell us a little bit more about the extent no, of the injury? No, I don't speak about injuries. Coach, you stay undefeated, and I know that you don't like to look ahead, but tonight with Notre Dame and Oregon and you guys undefeated and Alabama being tested right now, where does that put you in the picture tonight? I have no idea. I haven't. I don't know any scores. I don't know where we are other than that we won a ball game and we've got to go in and, and try to get ready for the next one. We'll let you do that night. Sorry. It's okay, Coach. Thank you. There goes the old ball, Coach. <laughs> Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> want to go back and take a look now at Colin Klein on this touchdown. I want to see he goes in and his head slams down into the turf. And 
Well, there was there was that hit, and then there was another piece of video that we had where it looked like a player got a hold of his right wrist, and he came up kind of holding his wrist as well. So we wonder now when uh, your marquee quarterback is injured. Uh, how long can you go before you say something about it? I know the, the coach is very tight lipped about injuries, as he told Heather, but this is not just your ordinary injury. I mean, this is your this is your quarterback of an unbeaten team. And uh, so we shall see. But that's a story still unfolding. And uh, Heisman wow. front runner as well. well. Let's hope that he's going to be OK, Herbie. I certainly that's hope right. that there's not an injury is going to sideline him at all. Once again, Herbie, the final score, 44-30. Your final thoughts yeah, here. It's another impressive win for Kansas State. Okie State, good effort to come back. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC. ESPN, the home of the Discover BCS National Championship. Now we take you to the studio for the Ford wrap-up with Robert Flores. Robert, take it away with that Alabama-LSU game, my friend.